Welcome back to WCS America Premier League Season 2 Day 2 action over here as we are getting ready for our winners match of today which is going to be between Red Bulls, Bomber and Axiom. I won't say Alicia but of course it is Crank. Crank. Alicia might give Bomber nightmares. Let, let, let's not do that to Bomber. <laughs> not yet. Uh, well, you know, they have somewhat similar styles, I would say. Crank, of course, we mentioned this is a, a rematch from Season 1. It was a pretty hectic series. Uh, and I, the only thing I can really think about, like, I feel like, you know, the, the black hole of memory was just that Crank went for Blink on the only map that you really don't ever do it on. He's a very I, bold player in PvT. Yeah, I think uh, the series was rather uh, funky. Oh, was that the last map on... Um... Uh, no, never mind. I'm thinking about a different series. Because I was thinking about this, like, one key EMP. What was the game that Crank played where he was in a really good position, but he lost on Habitation uh, because he got EMP'd? I don't. You're, that you're... that doesn't come okay. straight to memory. <laughs> that was sorry. one of the games in Season 1 that stood out most to me as well, because Crank was really sad when he lost it. I think that may have been against Paul, because he was in a group with two Terrans back then. Either way, these are two players that are familiar with each other. We are familiar with them as well. Of course, we know Bomber. Uh, Bomber was one of the first Terrans to start mixing in Widow Mines in his play, even yeah. before the Widow Mines got the buff. Uh, got the buff, and some would even say that you can tribute the buff to Widow Mines to Bomber because you know he started doing it. A few more Terrans started doing it. I'm not going to say that he was like the absolute first Terran that he's the inventor of the Widow Mining as Protoss, but he was doing it in a couple of high-profile games and. Just like one or two weeks after that, Blizzard was like, hey, we've seen Widow Mines being used against Protoss. This looks fun. Let's help the Terrans out a little bit. And since then, opening charge slots is suddenly a lot more difficult than it was before, Nate. Yeah, you know, Terran versus Protoss, especially with the maps in the last season, uh, we saw a lot of early game aggression from Protoss players. This season, I feel like, especially with the Widow Mine change, TVP has been... A lot more stable in the early phase of the game comes on a lot more to those late game fights, late game engagements. Think we've even been seeing a return of those heavy SCV pull games because yep. of Protoss players opening Colossus as a response to the Widow Mine buff. Because, as you said, opening charge lots can be so difficult with how good that area of effect damage is in the early phase. Yeah, it's really funny how it just like a small change like that, even though it's not a small change, it's a pretty big change, but on paper it looks like a small change, completely changes the landscape of this matchup. Suddenly, you know, in 8 out of 10 games, you see Protoss players open up with Colossus again. Sometimes, you know, they go double forge as well, old school double forge 3 base, and Terran says, uh-uh, SCV train incoming. Yeah. You've seen even Flash uh, jump on the little chain, on the little tra chain, train. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, chain train. there were okay. some builds, though, that really exploited the metagame previously, like, really well. Like, Oracle into Fast Third Nexus, suddenly, that's a build that's a lot more punishable now. And yeah. I think Crank, if he wants to play Greedy, will have a much harder time versus a Bomber on this set of maps. And I think the maps are going to have a big hand, especially in the way that these games pan out. Our first map will be Overgrowth. And how, how do you like this for uh, Crank's... You know, I would say aggressive style of PvT. Uh, but Crank doesn't have to be aggressive, though. Uh, I think this is not the best map for a Protoss to get really funky on, do something super crazy. Uh, I think in general this is a nice map to defend on two bases. And we all know that, like, Bomber is kind of an aggro Terran as well. Because, you know, in the old days, Bomber was all about... Because Bomber actually had, like, his high days during the SCV train era when, he, you know, he won... Uh, at the global final season two at Gamescom back then, he played multiple Protoss players that tournament, and every game kind of looked the same. It was yeah. like drop, try to drop, okay, nothing back, regroup, pull everything, run across the map, and just win. Like, this is how Bomber won that tournament. There was almost no like 45 minute macro game against Protoss or something. He played against first, he played against Grubby, and it was often just like drop into retreat, into regroup, pull SUVs, and go for it. So, you know, Bomber, you could say that he might be quite happy with playing against Colossus. But I also know that Crank is one of those players, uh, as both players are already story, I just have to fire up the game. Crank is also a player that I feel is either very strong early game or he's very strong late game. Like I feel mid game, it might be hard for him to survive. And that is exactly where I feel that Bomber might shine. But if it goes into very late game, I kind of like Crank's chances again because he's a protos that I've always admired for his absolute uh, or excellent map awareness, just having a few zealots everywhere, having pylons everywhere, the ability to warp in, and of course the spread of high templars, extremely important late game. He's also good at that. So you would say early game Crank, mid game Bomber, late game Crank again. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Bomber's a late game controller. The Terran army is pretty good as well. So as you guys can see, we're loaded in. We're getting ready to jump into our first game here of the winner's match here at WCS America Premier League. The winner of this best of three moves on to the round of 16. And our first player who just defeated Nesty in the bottom left 
our blue Protoss player is Axiom's very own Crank. Could argue he was one of the first players for Axiom, receiving the personal sponsorship from the team owner right before the team's invention. Do you and still know the first tournament Crank went to for Axiom? For the actual first tournament? Yeah. No. Nice. I think I know. I remember his first sponsor tournament was uh, an MLG. Yeah. But uh, it was close to your home. No, not that close. Yeah. MLG Rally, I believe, ah, 2012. That was the only one I didn't make it to that year. And he did he did so extremely well. He went so far, he defeated so many good players. That was really a... That was uh, a pretty sweet run he made. Yeah, yeah, that was a cute story. It was a beautiful story yeah. to follow. His opponent in the top right, the Red Terran player, of course, sponsored by Red Bull. It is Bomber, who won uh, a pretty pretty cool TVT series against Masa from Root. And I think uh, this is a really cool matchup to see, of course, as it is that rematch from season one. Nothing super crazy to kick this game off. Uh, Bomber, we've known him to be that guy that will avoid doing the more standard Reaper expand. In fact, this game, we're seeing a 12 barracks and a 13 extra barracks. So, Gasless 2 racks. this build, man, this brings me back to Cloud Kingdom days when people <laughs> used to do this. Uh, I'm actually very confused by uh, what Bomber is doing over here. It might be like one tech lab, one reactor. Is that what he's aiming for? And he's with no gas. Yeah, but like that it's he's just got to be straight up. Like maybe he wants to try to get a bunker at the natural. It's with running Marines across the map. No one does this, man. No. This is a bit unusual. Uh, I, that's why I'm expecting maybe a few Marines first and then a uh, refinery and then one is going to get a tech lab on the reactor. Either way, uh, we'll see if Crank is going to scout this. He did check the outskirts of his base, he dropped a pylon, but nothing on the map for him just yet. So no probe scout over here for Crank. Oh man, where are you going to go with this? What is this madness? This, this is, uh, is going to be an interesting amount of pressure, right? Because this actually gives you enough Marines that when he brings this pressure forward, uh, he could he could probably end up contesting an Oracle. He could definitely contest uh, a Stalker, maybe even the Stalker and the Mothership Core. The SCV will go in and scout. Uh, what's really important is whether Crank finishes his Zealot. So he has canceled it, and he immediately starts up that Stalker. And this is this is interesting because if he tries to bring SCVs with any type of attack, uh, the Stalker itself isn't particularly effective against that. And he's just pumping out Marines. I imagine he'll expand with this. Yeah. This this was actually pretty standard at a certain time in Wings of Liberty. Yeah, everything looks fine, other than the fact that this second Rex is throwing me off a little bit. This is not normally, uh, you don't expect the second Rex. Bomber has always been a Terran that has a um, little bit of diversity in his play. You know, one game it's a one Rex into a very quick factory. Uh, sometimes even one Rex fast expand and then still a quick factory, or just a standard two Rex expand. Or like, I mean, one Rex and then one additional Rex. Or he opens up with three Rex and actually produces a lot of Marines and Marauders. There's really a lot of diversity in his play and it's hard to predict him. But I think in general what I'm expecting from Crank is a very defensive two base style. Um, as I think that suits him and that kind of suits the current meta as well. And I, I don't really know where Bomber is going to go with that one, uh, with that second Rex. He's going to add another Rex over here. So soon we're going to see some good old 3 Rex action. But this gas is extremely late that it is just going to be a lot of Marines marching across the map. Yeah, I have to imagine there's not too much else he can do. And the thing is that Mothership Core is already out. It's already got just enough energy to be able to use that photon overcharge when this nexus completes so as the marines begin to cross the map like, yeah he's got more marines than you would have if you opened one barracks but that's mm -hmm. not enough to overpower the nexus cannon no that's not enough to uh, just like dance in photon overcharge and kill a lot of probes no so, <laughs> this is really confusing uh, i mean of course it's not the end of the world but it does slow his economy down a little bit his com command center was a little later than it would have been if he just did it on one rex or even crazier, when we would have gone to Manson first, he would have got away with because Crank did not scout at all. Crank wouldn't have even noticed. Crank, of course, completely unaware of the amount of uh, barracks that's on the other side of the map, but he must know Bomber as well. And he must have seen a couple of his games, you know, players like Crank, they definitely do their homework. And he, he must know that Bomber is not afraid to open up with three Rexes. It's actually something that he feels quite comfortable with. You know what? When I look at the build that Bomber did, I, if, from a Terran perspective, why you would do this build on a map like this, it's two players. Uh, if you try to do anything like a proxy gate or proxy oracle, any fast aggression, the extra marines will help you completely shut it down, like really, really, really early aggression. So it acts as a soft counter, and maybe you can do pressure if there's like a nexus first. But right now, you know, Bomber, he's kind of got marines sitting outside the base. He can't do much with them. 
Um, he has enough now to poke in, like he could try to focus down probes maybe, but he would still have to invest a lot to get anything from this. Yeah, not just that, he is down 10 workers, so even if he sacrifices all these marines and he takes down 5 probes, I can't imagine he kills more than that. I still don't think he's ahead or something, both the just being casted right now, Mothership Core is taking a lot of damage, the Mothership Core is going to fall. So that is a reasonably expensive pickup, and now he's going to be able to get a couple of works as well. I'm not sure why Crank is not really using his... Uh, yeah, he's not using his gateway his, units. His gateway units, like he could have actually brought them, because the Marines can only shoot at one thing. It's either gateway units or probes. Yeah, he gets a sentry as well. Uh, some of the Marines will escape, and that was, uh, you know, but that's I one of those bold moves where, as a Terran player, you kind of have to get... You know, just enough, or a counter push, or anything can really hurt you. And to be fair, the worker count is now even. It bought him a little bit of time. Uh, of course, killing the mothership core was very nice. He yeah, killed that... one of the sentries. Actually, killing the mothership core is more than very nice. That is going to set him up maybe for a very dirty follow-up time because within 30 seconds he's going to have steam. He has a lot of gateway, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, barracks units out on the map as well, or a lot of bio just to uh, simplify things. This could actually be very hard, because Crank right now has absolutely nothing that's good against Bio, especially not against Tim Bio. You know, a couple of force suits maybe, but he already lost his sentry. You don't want to dump too much gas in this phase in the game into anything else than just trying to get real tech out, whether it is Storm or uh, Robo Bay. The moment that Stim is ready, this is kind of dangerous. Yeah, this, this actually straight up kill Crank. Uh, tiny things, plus one armor is done, which is nice for Crank, as Bomber's attack upgrade hasn't completed, but Stim can really make that not too big of a deal this early in the game. Uh, without that Nexus cannon, let's see what happens. He stims the Marines in, looking for probes. The Mothership Core on the right side will also get sniped. He's just running behind this mineral line. This forces any Zealots into a choke point. Might even see that War Prism. Okay, that pulls back, but he denies mining. And he's going to go straight to these sentries. Another stim, of course, really hurts these Marines. <laughs> he shouldn't be able to get the Immortal. He just grabs an additional final probe kill before this force is cleaned up. And he's moved to a total of 14 probes killed. Resources loss is still even, but he's traded away pure minerals for a lot of gas units. Yeah, he killed the Mothership Core twice. That also means that no photon overcharge will be available for the longest time right now. And this is normally even a phase in the game where you don't really want to use photon overcharge unless it's absolutely necessary. Because preferably you save up 200 energy, so if there is a big battle, you can get time warp and photon overcharge, or you can drop a photon overcharge in the main, and then major, later in the natural as well, in case you have to worry about a drop and a straight up attack. Uh, Crank does not know yet about these two manifacts, he's going to see it right now, but he has so few units, and none of his units are very good against Tim Fire. I guess he can stabilize from this because he does have that one immortal in the mix, but uh, things are looking a little dicey for Crank until he gets not just Storm, but actually. You know, a few more real units out there as well. He just doesn't really have a whole lot right now. Yeah, with this plus two, the War Prism he has parked on the right side of the map could do a lot of damage. He's uh, There's two more Medivacs moving out on the right side as well for Bomber. So he wants to hit a lot of different areas at once. But Storm's about to finish researching, which means a lot better defensive capabilities for Crank. And this could just, uh, he actually could just bring everything outside the natural and try to poke more. Since without, any, without a lot of force fields available, those Storms, he should be able to dance around them. Matter of fact, it's gonna fly in the back of the natural right now. Units are a little bit out of position, but there are high templars available. There is Storm as well, but he could always feed back. A lot of probes are gonna go down again, and so far, this is not really the defense that uh, Crank was looking for. At the same time, he's gonna lose a lot of stuff in his main base as well. This forge is gonna take some damage. There is a Zealot and the Nexus shooting at these units, but this forge is still going to fall. Bomber is just kind of picking apart Crank over here. He's all over the place. This is the bomber that we all remember and the bomber that has stolen so many Terran hearts. Yeah, fantastic harass by Bomber so far. That storm goes, but he manages to keep his units alive. Even killing, uh, you know, that, that Forge is a really big deal. The no plus one attack might get the Cybernetics Core, which is a big a big scoop for him as well. That War Prism didn't really seem to do anything in Bomber's base in the midst of all of this. And he's now up to total 23 workers killed. He's got another big army waiting up front. And let's see, there's four Templar on the map, but no third base for Crank. Bomber's third is about to finish, and he actually has probably one of the weirdest looking walls at his natural that I've ever seen. <laughs> he has his armory as part of his wall. <laughs> He's like, well, I guess the only thing that I could die to is a big counterattack of a bunch of storms, maybe a few Archons, and a lot of Zealots, because that's like the only thing that you can't afford right now, so I'm going to make sure I won't die to that then. Yeah, even the eBay is like a pretty important building yeah. that you normally <laughs> Put your say. fusion core as part of the wall. <laughs> Uh, Bomber played very solid this game. He caught Crank off guard multiple times. I felt it went all from bad to worse the first time when Crank didn't use his two stalkers and the two sentries. He lost too much the first time. 
There's no way that he should have lost six probes and the mothership core against just a bunch of slow marines when he already has a few gateway units. If he warps in one more zealot as well, then that really shouldn't have been a big of a problem as it turned out to be. Bomber actually stimmed a couple of those units uh, towards the third base. He was like, there's no third base. Oh, okay, I guess I pull back then. Uh, his third command center, he's already floating it out. There's a pylon covering the left sir, the left side third base. Only a zealot on the right. So he might actually see be able to land this before his marines get there. And what exactly is Crank getting? He's, well, he's rebuilding the plus one attack. He has a good number of immortals. So like this is a good force against a marauder heavy army composition. Uh, Bomber still has a pretty healthy number of marines though. 23 marauders, 27 marines. Very beefy bio army altogether, and yeah. he has a lot of widow mines for defense as well. I would really love to see uh, maybe a ghost academy because a few with if bomber a would few be EMPs, able to get yeah. like two or three EMPs, then he can just stim in the next one straight up win because then it would be impossible for Crank to defend. Right now, I think it's going to be very hard for Crank to go up to three bases because bomber just has so many more units to work with than Crank that it's almost impossible for Crank to cover all of his tracks. Uh, look at the minimap. This is just so much red streaming down. Bomber shouldn't throw away uh, units like this. He ends up losing three out of four Marauders. A little bit sloppy there. Small victory for Crank. Oh, Widow Mines as well. That's actually a little painful. Good force fields by Crank. Gets four Widow Mines for nothing. Yeah, they all fell down to that little blender spot. War Prism is going to get hit, though. Great snipe for Bomber on the right Bomber. side. But this huge red blob that we've been looking at, you know, the Templar aren't actually... Are there any Templar with this army? No, he sends out a hallucinated War Prism. Uh, and maybe he's going to try to chase this when he sees it, but that's it. That could be a bit awkward. However, the Templar now up front. Couple Marines and Marauders stim forward. Eat some storms. Don't pick off any of the Templars, though. Does get one now, but there's still so much bio behind this. Are there any storms left? I don't think so. The Widowmines burrowing bomber, kiting back, and an Archon's going to try to morph, but man, that's as good as dead. Widowmine helps to put the finishing touch on that third base for bomber mining profusely and just that mini map so much red along it's like we're playing snake here man oh He's my god it's not even an map. scv pool those are actual units from bomber bomber is maxed out again there are like maybe three or four storms remaining on these two high templars that we currently have on the map upgrades are in favor of bomber as well as he has two two crank only at two one bomber forgetting about the small portion of his units though perhaps he's getting a little too hectic even for bomber but Frank right now is out of position in his own natural. That's never a good sign. And Palmer's just going to move into attack. He can rally all his reinforcements into his natural to defend. Widow Mines are going to put themselves between Bomber and Crank's army. Fortune Overcharge is cast, but this Nexus cannot stop this whole army. As Crank starts to fight about half of Bomber's forces, the Widow Mines get some good detonations, and most of the Zealots have been cleaned up. Does Bomber have enough left to overpower these high tech units? No, he actually just picks up. He's like, I got your Nexus. That's really all I needed here. A storm whiffs on just one medevac, actually hitting him more, getting a lot of damage on the Zealots, but he stopped. He's delayed. A good amount of mining in that third base mineral line of bomber in the midst of all this. Uh, that next wave of reinforcements is here, though. Bomber's going to send SCVs back towards that third. And Crank has very little economy behind this to make what could be his last attack work. More Templar being warped in just outside his base. He's got five Immortals and three Archons. Yeah, I believe in the power of Protoss, but I'm not sure if this is the right place or the right time. Uh, Bomber just seems to have a few too many units. Bomber is getting a little messy though, like he kind of fights all the time with half his army and earlier we saw him losing three Marauders and four Widow Mines. It's a little bit of a scrappy game, like, uh, game by Bomber, like he did a lot of things extremely right and with some beautiful plays, some beautiful multitasking. But on the other end he's making things I feel harder for himself than it really has to be. Uh, it's not like he's going to lose this game, I think, because he's going to deny this natural again. So that means that there is no more income for Crank. So Crank, I think, is just going to try to win the game with this, you know, little power hit squad of Protoss. But he knows that it's not going to be enough. GG is called and Bomber wins game number one on Overgrove. After it was a pretty entertaining game, a little bit of a funky, silly game as well, like a lot of things that we don't really see in your uh, ordinary TVP. Yeah, that's. It was, I think I think funky is a good way to put it. Bomber opening up with a build like, you know, you go into in a game, you know that your opponent Crank is the kind of guy that could proxy a gateway, but he can also play straight up economically very well. Uh, and Bomber used the like that extra couple Marines he got from the early game and just found a great the great way to get all those probes. I think you said it best. A little bit of slowness to respond to that first attack on Crank's part. He had the photon overcharge, but. The two stalkers and two sentries, like they didn't force field the marines away from the probes. They didn't even attack them, so they just died even even more slowly. And as you guys can see, 
This is the attack we're coming back. He comes in. There's the Fortune Overcharge. He'll lose his Mothership Corp. Watch the Stalkers and the Sentries. They're just sitting up there on the ramp. They're not doing anything at all. Maybe he was scared that Bomber would try to come up the main ramp, but that force field doesn't keep him from chasing these probes around, and it just allows Bomber to get exactly what he needs out of this early game, and the units come up just a little bit too late, even losing one of the Sentries. Yeah, I think I think you have a good point there. I think that's exactly what he was worried about, that if he would run down, that these Marines would run forward immediately. But I love the follow-up of Bomber as well. Like, this was super effective. Kills the Mothership Core again. He also knew there was no Photon Overcharge available because he killed Photon, the Mothership Core before. And it's unlikely that there would have been another Photon Overcharge. And even though these Marines literally stimmed to death. Stim is good, guys, but, you know... Uh, in moderation. In moderation. Don't overdo it over here. Uh, either way, both players are ready. We are ready. Uh, so game number two is going to be played on Frost, of course, we cannot have a single best of three without Frost. It was a cool game by Bomber, and uh, you know, I'm just thinking back about some of the games that I've seen from Crank. And last season, I do know that he cheesed, he was in a group with three Terrans, and he won his group 2-0, 2-0. I think he defeated Major 2 to nothing in two macro games, uh, but he also defeated Alive 2 to nothing, and he built gateways in Alive space. So maybe Bomber, you know, went over those games, he's just like... Okay, I'm not expecting it, but if you do it, I, I will be ready for your cheese. You know, I will have the right amount of Marines to defend this, and I will probably straight up win. And if he doesn't, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to try to just poke in with my pretty large Marine count in this phase in the game. That should be effective and should allow me to make something happen. And I think he got more than, than he could have possibly wished for. Yeah. The, the, the best part about being Crank is that your opponents have to keep in mind what you're capable of as a, as a player that can both macro and cheese. But uh, here we are on game number two. We've got Horizontal Spawns, our first player in the top left, the Red Terran player who's up 1-0 in this best of three. If he wins this game, he's off to the round of 16. Sponsored by Red Bull, it is Bomber. And he played fantastic. Very weird build in the first map, but his opponent might... Uh, well, he's the kind of guy that could either break out something more weird or just play standard again <laughs> uh, in the top right. The Blue Protoss player from Team Axiom, it is Crank. Needs to win two games in this series to secure his, what, what would it be, fifth consecutive round of 16 appearance? Yep. If he makes it, it will be the fifth time in a row. I think the only other player that has done that is Paul. Uh, I really can't imagine that. Like, I'm just thinking back. I can't really remember all 16 players of the first season of WCS America, but... Of the final eight, he's probably the only one, that's for sure. Uh, it's been a long journey for Crank, but it's definitely been fun. And seems like he might be opening over here with a Nexus first, while Bomber dropped the refinery over here on the left side of the map. So it could be a Reaper opening over here for Bomber against Nexus first. Now that sounds bad, and it is pretty bad. But it's not the end uh, of the world. This this setup though, the gas before the barracks, he's going to go straight for the factory. Ah, and okay. there's so there's a couple ways that you can do yeah. this, right? There's there's a build that personally I love to use. No players like Major love it. It's fast mind drop with a couple Hellions in the front. And then Maru is another player that on this map, the last couple games I've seen him play TVP on Frost. You go for your factory, but you get a very fast reactor, and you can either go like a two Hellion run by and just try to do a little bit of early damage, which could work well against this Nexus first. Or you just go for a lot of Marines with a Medivac Hellion drop without the Widow Mine. So there's a few options, but it's a very aggressive way to open up, especially in TVP. Yeah, and Crank's life would be about 100,000 times easier if he's actually able to see this. Well, unfortunately for Crank, he scouts cross position first. He doesn't find Bomber. Uh, the next time he checks in, it's going to be a little bit harder already as well. I think as the, there should be at least two Marines trying to push this probe out. If you scout this, it's still hard to defend, but at least it's possible. If you don't scout it at all, this could be extremely tricky. And oh, poor, poor Crank. He's going to send this probe to the right bottom side of the map. So he's going to be completely in the dark. Uh, this kind of has disaster all uh, written all over it. Yeah, Bomber's Scott. gotten away. Like, Bomber only made one Marine. If you're playing against someone that does Zealot Mothership Core Stalker open, this can just kill you outright. It's very greedy to open like this with his Marine out on the map, but because of the nature of the four-player map, it, it works. And his factory is done, the reactor is done, he's gonna put this factory onto the reactor, and I would be surprised if he did anything other than two Hellions. He could go two, four, uh, but even just two can kill a ton of probes. Any Protoss player will tell you a few Hellions in your mineral line can be a nightmare when you uh, don't have your tech out that fast. I would love to see uh, Crank Chrono boost out that Stalker, and uh, the moment that this one probe is going to see these two Hellions, and I think he will see it. 
drop two pylons over here on the top of the ramp and temporarily abandon this space over here on the south side. Because otherwise, uh, this is kind of nice for Krang. So even though he got unlucky with scouting the positions, I hope that he was paying attention to the probe. Uh, is he chrono boosting out the star? I'm not sure if he saw it there. Hmm. Uh, well, he keeps the zealot on the ramp and maybe he feels like he doesn't have to chrono boost the gateway unit. Like, not moving these probes, I feel a little eager, over eager. Well, he's got the Zell and the Stalker blocking the ramp. This is smart play by bon uh, by Crank. Try to keep these probes alive. He will lose just one to the Hellions, which is really nice. Like, Bomber gets not even oh. any real substantial scouting information. The probes try to move back. He's going to delay them for a little bit more. But losing these Hellions without seeing if there's any tech in the main base, obviously he knows now that it's a Nexus first. But he doesn't have all the information or really the damage that he would have liked to do. Four probes killed. I think this could have gone a lot worse for Crank. Uh, I think four probes is actually quite okay for Bomber because um, Crank did see those Hellions coming in time and this was not like an all-out, like Bomber didn't do what we were talking about in the start of the game, that he could have followed this up with a quick start with as well and then like one Widow Mine, maybe six Marines and then two or three Hellions in the natural. I think that would have been really difficult for Crank to defend. Not impossible, but it, it, it's almost impossible to not at least take some damage. Yeah. And I think just two Hellions over here from Bomber is a very small commitment. These Stalkers are uh, getting in the range of this Widow Mine. Crank sees it as well and runs back immediately, so excellent reaction time there for Crank. Yeah, uh, very, I, I very think nice. it's all right for Bomber. Yeah, because he didn't co really commit to what he uh, what he was doing. Yeah, I've, I mean Bomber is one of the few players I've seen open up gas first and not get a star port at all. Um, like I think back to like series really long time ago, he did something similar against like Rain on Whirlwind, like really long time ago. Uh, and he, now he does have the star port, but this is a much more standard setup. Stim is on the way. Um, Crank though, he's getting he's actually getting yet again another very standard setup. We're not seeing any Stargate play, no fast Twilight Council, and this this is pretty much going to end up being, a, I'd say, a regular TVP so far. Yep, it's going to be Twilight Council right now in the back of the natural, which is a little bit surprising. If I would have seen this two or three months ago, you know, this this makes perfect sense. This is pretty much how everyone is playing. Unless he still drops a Robo, uh, Robo base, sorry, he already has a robotic facility, of course. And he's just going to open up with Blink Stalkers and Colossus. Like, when I see these spawning locations, I think of uh, that game that MC played. Well, who did MC play? Was it MMA as well? Or was some of the other Terrans that he played? And he just said, like, if you do it well with four Colossus or five Colossus. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was uh, MC MMA, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was a really funny analysis as well. Like, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. But uh, basically, it came down to the fact that it's very strong. But now we do see that Templar Arc has been wiped in as well. And that's kind of what I expected because the Robo Bay wasn't there yet and it would be weird to see Colossus that late. You know, Crank is still opening how we used to open two or three months ago and there's nothing wrong with this because I still like to play like this as well, but it can be very hard to deal with a lot of Widow Mines. Yeah, it, it certainly can. Zealots, uh, they, they clump quite a bit. He doesn't have too many on the map just yet. But here we go, two Medivacs boosting across the map. It's just 16 Marines, he's got Stim. The damage output, you and I both know, we guys saw in the last game what these Stim Marine attacks can do. And all that's important for a Crank is prevent this from actually landing. The Observer runs right into the Medivacs. All he needs. Yeah, and he might even try to bait this. Uh, yeah, he's like, please on land. The Medivacs. Feedback, feedback. And if he can kill these Medivacs, that's a huge victory. Prevent the retreat, of course, without Blink, that's quite difficult to do so. Loses a Marine or so, keeps the Medivacs alive. Uh, that could have been a big win for Crank if Bomber wasn't paying attention. Yeah, this is really cool as well, because now it just plays out like almost nothing happens. But if Crank doesn't see that, like Nathan says exactly, what is super important for Protoss is that those units don't actually just land in the corner of your base and then stim in. Because the moment 16 Marines stim in, the damage output is unreal. But the moment they get dropped one by one and they already get hit on by a lot of, or already get damaged by a lot of these Protoss units, it's suddenly a lot less powerful. Crank is going to have to go for this immediately. And once again, he cannot let those units unload in his main base. Yep, pops a guardian shield. The observer placement for Crank has been fantastic. Storm he's, is late, though, Nate. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's done such a good job of defending so far. I I think actually I don't know. There is really not a lot of damage output in Crank's army right now. I'm a little bit worried. Yeah. Storm is only halfway done. And he used a lot of his Templar actually and energy on those feedbacks from earlier too. I don't know why. Like I'm worried. Why first. is Storm? So, did he? His plus two his armor is almost done. I yeah, guess. his armor is very quick, and he's also making immortals. He already has mm. two. Third one is on the way. Those are of course expensive units, but normally a storm should have been done a little. Uh, it's 11:30. Yeah. He does have a lot of observers, by the way. So uh, kudos to that. Yeah, I mean his observers saw all four medevacs when they each came in. His observer, I mean, it's right on top of the army. He he'll know if Crank, or excuse me, if Bomber tries to move in from the right side, or he goes back up top. 
And look at this pylon spread just around the map as well. That's yeah. kind of nice. He's, he's watching for anything else. He has the potential to harass later on. He's really good at that. Like I said at the start of the series, I've always admired that. Because that seems that's so easy, but for some reason my pylons always get found. They always get denied. And just like, by the time I actually want to wipe in units, I have no pylons in locations. But a player like Crank, for some reason, every single TVP I cast from him, he has pylons up all around the map at any given moment. And they won't get sniped. Now, one of them will get found, but still, he has two more, so nothing to worry about. No. Not at all. Uh, Bomber still has a very capable force out on the map, cleans up one of those pylons. Uh, but we say Bomber, you know, this yeah. is one of those things we talked about. The Widow Mine production is still continuing. Very good versus how many Zealots are in this army composition? 18. Yep. The Widow Mines, they, they go to town on those Zealots. It'll be very important to use the range of those Immortals. Uh, Bomber's going to try to snipe his third base, and he should succeed in doing so. Yeah, nice pick off there for the Terran player. So despite all these observers that Frank has, trying to get another pilot up over here on the north side of the map as well, he still couldn't see this entire Ar Terran army move to that north side and deny that base. It's a little bit unfortunate. You know what's also interesting, by the way, is that he didn't go for any of the Twilight console upgrades before he started producing Immortals and Storm. Like normally you see at least a player either open up Blink aggressively or defensively, or whatever he wants, and then charge and then Storm. But he rushed the Storm and then he decided to go for charge for a long time. So. Uh, it's pretty interesting how Crank has played this, and it's not something I see very often, or I see a whole lot of Protoss players do. Yeah, Marines checking around the map looking for any pylons. Bomber's got three medevacs worth of units up top. Most of his army rallied towards the center tower, and Crank knows that this third base is being put by this high ground here. We've already seen some cool storms in yesterday's matches on S on, on probe lines. There gets feedbacks actually. This is a very uh, kind of just backhanded that army is like, yeah, get out of here. I would and love to see wow. this other army run into the natural though, and that's what Bomber is going to go for right now. Look at the supply Observer by the way. Sees it. Is he going to respond in time? There's a Templar on the high ground, but the scan reveals that. Immortal actually takes a hit on it. There's the first storm. He does pick off the Templar, so he's got all, most of his army intact. There's no more oh. uh, storms with this force, and those Zealots gonna eat some Widow Mind Pain, using almost half of their real health, and that is definitely nice. Zealots going into the natural expansion of Bomber during all of this. Uh, holding on the, the wall, though, he's gonna be quite fine at the ramp. And Bomber's holding so far. These Marauders run up. He's going to get a couple of Templars by the third base. The storm hits just one of them. And that's a very nice pickup for Bomber. This Archon should not be able to finish morphing. And Bomber still has that massive force outside yeah, the natural. And above all, Bomber has the high ground over here, which is really annoying. As a Protoss player, you don't ever want to give up that ground. That's why Krang's going to move his entire army right now. Guardian Shield being popped as well. So many Zealots storming in. There are Widow Mines, but in the end, at least Krang is able to push Bomber back over here. I think that's super important. Yeah, this is a oh, solid, natural, solid hold so far. Yeah, he runs into the natural. He's going to try to pick up the Twin Templar. He does barely manage to get it. No storms get off. Just Zealots here to defend that by army stimming. He's got five medevacs to keep this force alive. He's still got that army up, up to, uh, by the third base as well. Picking out these Zealots. Widow Mines in between uh -huh. the army, buying him too much a there. little bit of time. And there is just so much here for Bomber. Won't get that Nexus, though. Yeah, but he's going to get the other Nexus right now. He's going to have Marines shooting from the high ground. The Marauders on the low ground working on this Nexus. And the moment that Crank brings these uh, Immortals, back trying to deal with these uh, marauders then that remaining hit squad is going to run towards the natural again crank is going to wipe in a few high templars they're super exposed as well feedbacks will land at least do something but i think that this nexus is going to fall and yes yeah he gets the natural nexus there's a colossus right by that force as well that he might pick oh. up a great grab for bomber as that last medevac does retreat out and he still holds that high ground position look at this next massive force crank can't handle it gg bomber takes the series what a fantastic series by bomber really cool play that he pulled definitely didn't go for the standard builds uh whatsoever in either of those games not even our standard non-standard builds <laughs> yeah bomber just kind of doing what bomber does best in the long run though just like he starts dropping and even though he's losing units every time you look at his supply count it's still at 180 190 it's really sick how he does it in his matchup i think he really used the mobility of his army very well in the latest stages of that game during that first fight on the north side when a couple of storms were landing on that little alley i kind of felt he should have used his units south already but then he, when he started using it he was really spreading cranked in and cranked just did not have enough units like it was close and a certain point it was almost like maybe he can stabilize but the moment you wipe in like 12 to 14 zealots in your natural and you still haven't cleaned up that bio squad like if that one high templar actually either lands a storm or connects three feedbacks to those manifex then he doesn't have to worry about that squad anymore you know then yeah then you send in those 12 zealots and they will clean it up but that's that one high templar in the natural dying 
against that hit squad that made his life so much harder because that high temple had 200 energy as well yeah and he even bought time for himself killing the nexus he put he, he was always positioning his widow mines between what he was attacking and where he anticipated the protoss army would be so even with an observer to kill them that's still a little bit of time you have to spend killing those the bio gets more hits off on the nexus and of course allows him to know where your army's moving so that he can try to hit that third base as well just Great positioning, great tactical play by Bomber. And because of that, he gets, a, he gets a pass now to the round of 16. We'll be seeing him once again. Yeah, second season in a row that Bomber makes it to WCS America round of 16. Of course, the seasons before that last year, Bomber was participating in Korea with quite a bit of success as well as he made it into GSL, I believe, into his semifinals and also into a quarterfinals. And of course, one time he qualified for the season to global finals and he won the entire damn thing back then. We're still going to qualify one more play, though. So right now, what do we have? Yesterday, we had a Protoss and a Zerg. Oh, the first three players that qualify for the WCS America Run of 16, all three races represented. Perfect balance, Nate. That, that's a thing of beauty, of course, guys. Up next, we're going to have our losers match. It's going to be between Nesty and Masa. I think that should be a really cool TVZ yeah. to watch. I think so as well. And I know that Masa's TVZ is pretty damn good and really entertaining to watch. So we're going to head over to a very small commercial break. And after that, we're going to bring you the first TVZ of the day. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. 